guys, guys at dudes at what's popping. Um, welcome to episode number 78 of the sports plus life podcast. My name is Edgar, Mr. AKA Rodriguez. And, um, this weekend, man, was, was doozy time, doozy squared, if you will, on sports. Um, amazing weekend of sports. Um, so we're a good time. It was a good time this weekend. Um, everything was exciting. The teams won. Denver Broncos come back and beat the uh, the Chargers. Oklahoma rolled through Texas Tech. Um, Uncle Edgar went five and one in his picks in UFC. Went one and four in his picks in NFL. But hey, that happens. I mean, who's gonna? I I didn't know it was gonna freaking. It was gonna be. 80 to 80 miles per hour winds in Cleveland. Um, I didn't know it was going to rain a lot in Pittsburgh or Baltimore. I'm sorry. Um, I did not foresee the Rams getting pushed in the way they did. Yeah. It was just stuff like that happens, you know, that's what happens. Um, but, um, I mean, I want to talk about first right away, probably the knockout of the year in boxing. Javante Davis completely puts away Leo Santa Cruz. The first time that's ever happened. First time anyone's, let alone I think the second time he's ever been dropped. And the first time probably was an accident. But that was the first time he's ever, probably, let's say legitimately the first time we've seen the canvas. And he didn't get up. He was out for a while. Trevonta Davis, there was a reason why they call him Tank. I mean, with a looping left uppercut. And, I, you know, credit to Trevonta Davis not taking anything away from it. Um, he saw his opening and he took it. But Leo Santa Cruz is being very lazy with his right. Very lazy. He was just standing on the ropes in the corner, just pawing his little right hand out there. And Davis, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he went. Remember remember when that one girl got socked in the uh, bus by the bus driver? It was like that. It was he came from the floor. Can you hear me from the floor? It was like a Ryu Sharuk and Blue Flame uppercut. I mean, I don't even know how else to explain it. It was like he was like playing a guitar, like Elvis style. Whap! And it was such a clean punch. And um, I don't think I've reacted like that in a while. I was so shocked. I sat there. If you guys follow me on Sports Plus Life, Instagram and Twitter, M R A K A C O, Instagram and Twitter. Like, you can see it, hear it in my voice, see it in my eyes. I didn't think that was possible. And Javante Davis proved that it was definitely possible to knock him out. Um, and Javante Davis is a huge threat. I mean, one of the best pound-for-pound fighters out there right now, hands down. What he did earned my respect. What he did earned a lot of people's respect. And if there ever was a fight between him and anyone else, I'm taking Javante Davis. Javante Davis has a chin on him. Javante Davis is getting better, too. He's definitely getting way better under the tutelage of Money Mayweather, Floyd Floyd Mayweather, um, and the Money Team, TMT Boxing. Um, he looked very, very well, very crisp. I I had it 3-2, um, I think 3-2 Davis, or 3-2 three, 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 Davis um, in that fight up until the sixth round when he got knocked out. But it's like... That's, that's what ha- I mean. It just goes at the basics. Ba- bo- you know, people think boxing is very, you know, very tedious. There's a lot that goes in the box. I mean, it's just very basic. It's like you're going to throw right, put your hand back. And, uh, <coughs> oh, geez, is that bad luck? Excuse me. Oh, my God. Anyways, um, I'm going to sneeze attack. Um, but it was very, it was very lazy. I don't, I don't know what. There was no footwork there. I Man, he got caught flat-footed and bam, got put night night. I think even uh, was is it Bernstein? I can't remember who was commentating with Mauro Ronaldo, but he was sitting there. He's like, I th- he was saying, I think he was saying Tank Davis. You know, probably thought Leo Santa Cruz was going to fold to his pump. Boom, knocked out. Thought he was going to fold to his punches, and just like that, got put to sleep. Man, it was ridiculous. Um, definitely worth the pay-per-view money. I'll tell you that much. Anytime you see something like that, um, there's a good fight too. Be, be uh, right before that, Carl and I can't remember the other guy's name. Good fight. 
That was a really good fight. Um, but man, got a feel for Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, I mean, hopefully, I mean, he'll come back. Um, you know, a guy like that had a lot of them. His dad almost died a couple of times. He coded, is what they mean. Um, because of COVID 19, he coded in the hospital. They brought him back twice, he said. And um, just scary stuff, but you know, you know, stuff like that, the boxing, that's what you love to do. That's what happens. And uh, he played it off. He, he was a professional. He, you know, took his L and he was like, hey, I'm going to take my L. Congratulations, Tink. And Tink was equally as uh, respectful. said, hey, I'm glad you and your dad are okay. Um, thanks for sharing the ring with me. So, mad respect to both fighters, especially Tank Davis. You got the huge dub. And props to you, brother. Um but yeah, it was a it was a beaut. If you have not seen it, it's everywhere. Go to my page, M R A K A C O Sports Plus Life, uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, go check it out. Go check it out. Let me close this because it's really bothering me. Um, there was other fights. Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva fought this weekend, and um, let's leave that off. Uncle Edgar said, Uncle Edgar went five and one. The one that I did not get right. Was Bobby Green and Moises and um, Thiago Moises that should have gone to Bobby Green. Bobby Green won that fight. Bobby Green controlled that match. Judges saw it the different saw it differently. It was close, but I thought Bobby Green won the fight. Snub me from a perfect, a perfect weekend. Is what it is, man. Is what it is. But the main attraction: Uri Hall knocks out Anderson Silva in the fourth round, late. And Anderson Silva was actually pretty decent, you know. You you he did. I think he took a back last fight uh, in UFC. I think he took because he came out very Muay Thai, and that's shoot the box. If you guys don't know, shoot the box. Back in the day, shoot the box out of Brazil, out of uh, Brazil. Um, shoot the box, big gym, uh, Muay Thai gym, like old, like shoot the box, like street fight, like. Box like a lot of people came with Shutabak Shogun, uh, Shogun Hua, Vanille Silva, um, Anderson Silva. A lot of people came out of Shoot the Box, but um, it was um, he came out, he came out Muay Thai, came out, he was gonna he sat there and stri- he was striking, um, because I don't think this was ever supposed to go to the get to the ground, anyways. Um, Uri Hall is primarily a striker as well, and um, it looked slow. For the first three rounds. It looks so. I thought Anderson Silva was probably up 2-1. I think. I can't even remember. I just so much was happening this weekend. Um, but, you know, there, there comes a point when, you know, I knew it was going to go the way it was. That's why I chose Uri Hall to win the fight. Because Anderson Silva just does not have the chin anymore. And it's very unfortunate. He just doesn't have the chin that he used to. Ever since that first uh, Weidman fight, just hasn't been there, and um, and it, it was very reminiscent, especially when the fight was over. He knocked him out, drops him with like a weird punch, um, and then finishes him on the ground. Um, it was very reminiscent of Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair at WrestleMania. I think it was like WrestleMania twenty-seven. I got I got to look that up now. Um, he, uh, WrestleMania 24, um, where he sits there, you know, it's towards the end of the match and Ric Flair's getting up, barely getting up off his feet. He's like, come on. He's like, come on. Putting his fists up. Like he's very has enough to stand up and Shawn Michaels standing at the corner, his head down. He looks up ready to give him sweet chin music. And he just looks up and he says, I'm sorry. I love you. And then just sweet chins. He knocks him out with the sweet chin music. It's very reminiscent of that afterwards. You're right. I was out there crying. He's crying. So man, I love you. And her still like, don't worry. Keep doing your thing. You're special. And that it, it was, um, I got, I was a little emotional, man. And so, uh, I mean, I've gone to Vegas to see him a couple of times. I have, um, you know, I got all his fights. He used to buy all his fights. It was very exciting. Although that one fight in Abu Dhabi, <laughs> I'll never forget how shit that was. That was the one against Damian Maya. 
I think it was. Was it Paulo? Paulo was it latest? I think it was Demi Maya. I'll never forget that one. That was trash. But it's just sad, man. Losing five, I believe, out of his last six, four, four or five out of his last six, something like that. Four out of his last five, five out of his last six, I believe. Has it? And his last win was uh, Jared. Was it Cannoneer? No, Cannoneer beat him. It doesn't matter. Um, it's not good. It was a decision, and it was just like, you know, you don't like to see people go through that. Like, I don't like seeing Cowboy go through it right now. Cowboy's on the kind of like that. That end. Diego Sanchez looks very slow. Doesn't does not belong there anymore. Um, you know, I, I looked at Anderson Silva. I was like, man, that that dude's old because you could tell the way his body looks. Um, but props, man. Um, Uri Hall went out there, did his thing. Anderson Silva, you know, did his thing for many, many years and made a lot of memories, made a lot of money. Um, and, um, you know, I just, uh, I'm not for the best. I really don't want to watch him fight. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't think he should go back to training. I think his kid's a professional, his oldest, I believe. So I think they're funny. They make, they make the TikToks and, uh, there's this one where his kid is like, um, this kid thinks he can beat me in a fight. Does anyone know him a more close by? Get a look at the TikToks. And there's still with TikToks. And then there's one of her, his daughter. She goes, break my heart. This is my dad. And it's like shows Anderson Silva knocking people out. I think that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, that was it. Um, there was also, let me see what else. Bryce Mitchell, Andre Feely. I mean, they brought it, man. Bri- Andre Feely's tough, dude. So is Bryce Mitchell. Uh, Bryce Mitchell had his camel shorts out there, anti-masking, and <laughs> Andre Feel. I mean, they do. That. They put on a good show. I mean, that was a tough fight for Bryce Mitchell, and he he, he passed the test. Um, is he ranked yet? I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't. Come tomorrow, I think it was when their rankings come out Tuesday, Election Day. By the way, um, hopefully you guys voted. Um. If you're in Colorado, I think California, Colorado, California, like there's a lot of states that will still allow you to register and still go in and vote as well. So keep that in mind. But I also expect very long lines tomorrow too. Um, um, but Bryce Mitchell, Andre, Andre Feely, great fight. Um, Maurice Green, Greg Hardy, Greg Hardy did his thing, knockout. Um, Kevin Holland did his thing, knockout, called out um, Adesanya because he was close by. And uh, that was very corny. And then that Bobby Green Moises. And then Bobby, no, no, no. I'm with Bobby. Alexander Hernandez. Knockout. That's the other fight I picked. Um, but there's actually a lot of knockouts on the undercard, which I, I miss. For, there's a lot of stuff going on. I ain't got to go back and watch them. And um, busy, busy, uh, busy Saturday for a long co editor. But it was fun, man. It was good times. I love the UFC. I love boxing at the same time. I love having all these screens. Although my internet hates me because I know I think I went over on internet and streaming and stuff like that. That's okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um, not the pasta, not the pasta. But it was mentioned after the fight that Israel Adesanya will be fighting Jan Blakowicz for the light heavyweight championship. Instead of Robert Whitaker, which I think was that's what the decision was based off of, was Robert Whitaker's like, eh, I really don't want to fight Adesanya. I mean, it's just like, I think it's just like Whitaker's, um, just demeanor. I mean, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to go hang out, have Christmas with my, my kid. I don't give a shit about fighting anybody. I mean, he's been at the top, man. He's fought a lot of good fights. Um, I'm sure that's the next fight to make at, at middleweight anyways, at middleweight. Um, but I'm, I'm, we'll see how Jan Blakowicz does against Izzy Adesanya. Adesanya, I mean, that's more of his weight class. He's a big dude. Six three six four. Fights at 185 pounds, 205, four pounds, 205 pounds probably obviously won't be a big difference. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I think it's a, a little, little bit corny fighting for the light heavyweight champ. I, I think so. And um, But we'll see. You never know. The Polish Hammer. They call him the Polish Hammer for a reason. I mean, you're fighting a very tough dude. And um, Blakowicz can knock you out. Whenever he wants, he showed it against Dominic Reyes. He showed it against um, Corey Anderson. Um, he's done it plenty of times. He could also submit you too. So that's going to be very interesting. Interesting fight whenever it happens. What January, February? I don't know when when the fight's going to happen. Was going to happen 
is going to be happening. Um, so we have that to look forward to. John Jones will be fighting for the championship at some point. Um, I don't know when John Jones will be fighting because they are targeting the heavyweight championship. Um, like February or March or something like that between Francis Ngannou and Stephen Miocic, obviously, because Miocic is a champion. So I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of questions being surrounded between a lot of championships. That's the lightweight championship. Do we have a tournament here? I mean, there you have Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Obviously, is supposed to be a done deal. Dustin Poirier is saying something different. You also have Michael Chandler now in the mix. Justin Gaethje is still there. Tony Ferguson is still there. Um, I mean, I could go on and on and on. There's a lot of good fighters there to fight. So we shall see. We shall. You know. You know what? You know the vibes here. It's with time. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, but Uncle Edgar's picks. Uncle Edgar's picks for week eight was not good. One and four. Um, I went one and four, and I don't even remember who I picked. All right, I got it right here. Um, Saints beat the Bears in overtime. Pittsburgh beat Baltimore last second, pretty much. Vikings beat the Breaks over the Packers. Um, I picked Packers. Got the break speed off of my Packers. Wait, Packers got the break speed off of them by the Vikings. Browns got beat by the Raiders. It was a lackluster game. The only one I got right was the Seahawks over the Niners. That was the only one. And the only thing, and, um, and people were like, well, you probably picked it because of Russell Wilson. I picked it because of DK Metcalf. That guy is an utter, complete monster. I mean, he is... Terrell Owens 2.0 with Jerry Rice hands. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. With Randy Moss hands almost. And then ridiculous speed. Um, if there's, if, if, like I said, if there's going to be a Royal Rumble, I'm taking DK Metcalf. If there's going to be NFL Royal Rumble, I'm taking DK Metcalf. I'm taking Khalil Mack. I'm taking Aaron Donald. Like, I was going to do uh, some of the scariest um, athletes, like a top 10 list. And I just, I thought of it too late and I just was, I'm not going to put it out. But DK Metcalf was definitely on there. Like John Jones was on there. Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, obviously, obviously. Anderson Silva was on there. Um, um, what's his name? Harrison, James Harrison was on there. Big cuz, big homie is what you call him. Big homie. Um, who else was on there? I don't remember. I was trying to make a list, but um, because I'm also working on the GOAT video as well. Keep an eye out for that one. Um, and I'm going to do an MMA GOAT edition and an NBA edition. I might even venture over to NHL, NFL, MLB, soccer. I might do that. I might do a little series, a little baby podcast series. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to start with Baltimore-Pittsburgh because Baltimore-Pittsburgh was like one of the early games on. And I was, you know, Lamar Jackson played decent. But it's still crazy that the weakest part of his game is passing. Um, What, two interceptions, I think maybe two fumbles, I believe. Um, I mean, it was, uh, you know, very questionable passing. And... And he didn't do too bad, especially considering the defense they're playing. The defense is very good. I mean, we got Watt in there, Dupree in there making noise. That was a ve- that's a very good defense. And I don't know, I don't have the numbers out in front of me. I'm not going to pull them up because I really don't want to. But um, I think the game ended up being 28, 24 is what it ended up being. Um, 20, 24 Steelers. I mean, they had their chances, but those turnovers killed them. Turnovers killed them. They had the lead, too. They had a lead on the Steelers, and they, they, they blew it. And, I mean, and then after the game, after the game, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, I call him because we're kind of tight, um, said, you know, what's a, what's a reason, what's a, you know, what's the thing about having, he said something like, you know, why have soldiers out there if you're not going to use them? I only caught, I mean, let me, now I got to pull up the numbers. I really didn't want to, but now I have to because I'm, I bring it up. Marquise Brown had one touchdown. Um, the hell? 
he had one touchdown and where's he at? He had one catch for three yards and it was a touchdown. I mean, even Mark Andrews only had three catches for 32 yards, no touchdowns. Like a lot of these, I mean, the passing was just, was not good. I mean, it was a total of uh, what? What did Lamar Jackson end passing for? 13 of 28. So not, not even half of his passes hit the mark. Under 50%, 208 yards passing, two touchdowns, two picks. Got sacked four times. Um, and then that wasn't good. It just wasn't good. It's not good. It obviously was not good enough to beat the Steelers. And the Steelers have... Um, so I mean, halfway through the season, they're the favorites to go to the AFC and represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. On the other side, you're looking at the Seahawks. I mean, in or should we start throwing Bill Brent, uh, Ben Roethlisberger in the MVP conversation? I mean, what's his numbers right now? Let me take a look here. His numbers: six uh, one thousand six hundred twenty-eight yards passing, fifteen touchdowns, four picks. I don't know where that that puts him as far as touchdown passes, but should we start putting him in there? Um, should we start talking about him as a threat here? Let me take a look here. Russell. Well, actually, let me do this here. Cause I'm going to pull up the stats as far as quarterbacks go. Um, no. We're not going to put him up there because you still have someone like Roethlisberger. Where's he at? Where's he at? No, never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's not even like top 20 in passing. Um, but, I mean, let's talk, let's talk about this. I want to talk about the Steelers real quick because, I mean, look what they've done. I mean, look what they've done. That is, as much as I mean, I'm not a big Tom, you know, Mike Tomlin fan, but look what's happened there. They drafted really well. They got Claypool. They got Watt. Ben Roethlisberger is back. They got Juju Smith. They have pretty decent tight ends. James Conner. They've all drafted all these guys. What else did they do? Well, they got rid of Le'Veon Bell. They got rid of Le'Veon Bell at the time, one of the best running backs. And, you know, during that time, Le'Veon Bell sat out, traded him to the Jets next year. And they were like, yeah, we don't need that. We don't, we don't want this, sh- this negativity around. We just don't need that shit. And then what happens the next season? They'd get rid of a- uh, Antonio Brown. They're like, yeah, you're toxic, bro. There's nothing wrong with you. We're releasing you. We're letting you go. And even with all these good, great players, because let's, let's be real, as crazy as Antonio Brown is and as whack as Le'Veon Bell is, they're very good football players. And even with all that going on, they were a game away from making the playoffs. With all these injuries, no Ben Roethlisberger, um, no Ben Roethlisberger. I think James Carner was out for quite a bit too. Um, and they almost and they, and I think Juju Smith missed a lot of time last year too. Missed a few games, anyways. And they almost make the playoffs. I mean, and then look what they're doing this year: undefeated, the only team undefeated so far. This is a complete team, such a great team. Um. Mike Tomlin's done a good, very good job of just getting a good core together. Ben Roethlisberger as well, coming back. I I mean, there are times when I sit there and watch Ben Roethlisberger, I'm like, Jesus, dude, what are you doing out there? And somehow I just complete the the damn pass. I just don't get it. I don't get how he does it, but he does it. Um, That's a good, good, that's a very good team. A very good team. And, and um, I'm willing to admit it when I was wrong. When they were 4-0, I was like, eh, we'll see what we can do against the Titans and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it happens, dude, it happens, whatever. But I still think, I did say they have, they're on pace, to, but they still, they still have to beat the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are still the team to beat. Patrick Mahomes is still going to be one of the top guys out there, probably MVP in the race for the MVP with Russell Westbrook. Um... But you got to look at Claypool for AFC rookie, or you know, rookie of the year, and he's giving old Joey B, Joe Burrow, a run for his money. 
I think ultimately go to Joe Burrow because Joe Burrow is tearing shit up. Joe Burrow got a dub over the Titans, the mighty Titans this week. I mean, and Giovanni Bernard is good at the stepping in. I mean, this is the crazy. It's like a weird football season. I mean, just take a look. I mean, the veterans kind of holding their own, but there's a lot of young and up and comers. DK Metcalf being one of them. Claypool. You're taking a look at Claypool. We're going to talk about the Denver, the Denver Broncos here pretty soon. And what they were able to do this week and what the very young team and very inexperienced team and what they're able to do against a tough Chargers team. Same thing. You got Drew Locke. We're talking about youth here. Drew Locke. You have Justin Herbert. You have Jerry Judy. Um, I mean, you got these young kids coming in doing the damn thing. And um, Tua Tagovailoa going in his first start. He likes to do this. Goes in his first start in college is in the championship game. Goes out wins the championship game. Comes in his first start against the uh, former NFC champions a couple years ago. Um, and beats and they go in there and beat them. Dude, it's like twenty twenty is not too bad for a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, very exciting. And every every weekend is very exciting. I'm just glad. I'm just fortunate to be able to watch these things. I did fall, dude, so I fell asleep like briefly. I'm not gonna tell you what game, but I was like, dude, I was so tired. I don't know what happened. I think I like, I like. I had a sh- like a sugar crash, like because we handed out candy, and you know a lot of people weren't out, and Uncle Edgar indulged a couple pieces, and I was like, and I woke up, I was like, what the f- just happened? Anyways, um, we're not, we're not gonna talk about the Browns Raiders game. I mean that was just ugly. It was just ugly. The weather was ugly. No one could kick a field goal, and um, it was just bad. Whatever. Raiders won an ugly game. Um, let me go through my picks. Packers, Vikings. I didn't watch that game. It didn't look good. They're 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 definitely missing Aaron Jones, for sure. The Packers are. Um, Bears and Saints did not watch that game either. But look, I watched a little bit. I watched like the towards the end of overtime. Didn't watch it, but I think the Saints were up quite a bit, if I'm not mistaken. Let me pull up this. Let me see these numbers here. Let me see these numbers here. There's like a box score. It'll tell me. Um, while we're waiting here, um, does anybody hold on? Never mind. I was just kidding. Um, yeah, it was pretty close for the most part. I mean, if anything, Chicago's up at halftime, and then after three, Saints were up. And then it was tied. And then it went to overtime. And they won a field goal. Um, a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people weren't giving the Bears a lot of good chances. But look at the Saints. They're five and two, like quietly five and two. I mean, they won the game. Let me see. Let me, see, let me take a look at it. There was that one against Tampa Bay where they starched him. Um, but then they lost two in a row. One to the Raiders. One to the Packers. And then they beat the Lions, Chargers, Panthers, Bears. Oh my. Last four games. They're on a four game winning streak. And then they got Tom Brady and the Pat and the Buccaneers again, who just squeaked one by by the Giants today. We'll see if that one goes. Is that Monday night? What's the eighth? Sunday night. I think that's Sunday night. Looks like it. Sunday night. Um I don't know, man. Football's amazing. Football's been very fun. Um What oh, man, that's is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I don't even remember, to be honest with you. Um there was the Broncos game. So the Broncos game, what a solid win that was. A comeback win to beat a tough team like the Chargers. And the Chargers, I don't know what it is. Justin Herbert's doing everything amazing. He's playing very, very well. Um and the running backs have come in and is it Kelly and I can't remember the other one. Have come in and filled in perfectly for uh, Eckler. Or for Eckler, um, Andre Henry's going out there playing. Keenan Allen played very, very well. Made a lot of good grabs. I think he had two touchdowns. Um, offensive line's doing well, blocking for him. I think the defense, which is very, very good, hasn't got a lot of playing time together. Um, you have Ingram. You have Kenneth Murray. Um, 
it, they, they just they just lose it late. But the Broncos, I mean, that's huge for the Broncos. That's huge for Drew Locke. Because Drew Locke, I mean, people are like putting him on the cutting board. They're just like, let's off with his head already. Let's go get someone else. There's rumors of trading for Sam Darnold if this wasn't working out. But like Drew Locke is young. I mean, this is 2020. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of weird shit going on. Um, I think the play calling could be better for Drew Locke. Honestly, think so. Um, the play, some of the play calling is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm just like, what are we doing here? Why is this play being called? I just don't get it. Is it Munchik that I, you know, you know, I'm just, I'm so tired right now. But uh, um, and the defense played very, very well. A depleted defense, a depleted defense, and I mean, that's that's owed to co- Coach Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio's done very well with that defense. That he's a defensive dude. I love what they're doing. And if we had Von Miller, this would be a different situation. Bradley Chubb's doing pretty good. Um, we're talking about Johnson. We're talking about Jackson. We're talking about Simmons. A.J. Bowie got beat up a little bit, but people were able to fill back in. Um, it, it, was a, it was a great team effort by a very young team. Great, you know, it was great coaching there towards the end there. Um, and just did it. Just, it was just a lot of a lot of faith in each other. It was such a good win. I was just like, dude, my friend texted me. He was at the game at one of the few 5,000, whatever it was. He was like, can we do it? I was like, hell yeah, we could do it. We could come back. And then boom, last second, no time on the clock, hit the PAT, let's go home. Um, probably helped that there was no snow. <laughs> probably helped that there was no snow. But it, team effort, man. Steelers team effort. Broncos team effort. Everyone team effort. Um. It takes a team effort to get DK Metcalf. <laughs> um, a lot of Premier League, Manchester United did not do very well, and it was bad. Um, I still don't know what we're doing with Fred and Scott McTonomy, why they're playing on the same field together at the same time. It's a, it's, it's just horrible. It's just very, very bad. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do there. But anyways, Cor- uh Ronaldo came back from coronavirus and scored two goals, I believe. Came on as a sub, scored two goals. That guy's in great shape. I mean, I just need a little bit of chance. Like, I, need, I need a little bit of money. So all I could do is just work out. And um, that's all I have to do is work out. I'll beat Gucci, man. Dude, if I had money, listen, you're not ugly. You're just broke, remember? Have you heard that old saying with the Kardashians? And everyone's done it. Fix your teeth. Oh, I got a bag, so I'm gonna fix my teeth. Isn't that what uh, Nicki Minaj says? I think J. Cole says something similar. Something like that. Something like, that. like in that crooked smile, right? Is that where I don't remember what he says. But anyways, yeah, I mean that's that's it, man. I just wanted to come out, talk, say what's up, give my P's and Q's, give my two cents on um it's really the next uh, the next podcast where I start to Give more of my two cents. Where are we at? What's popping off in the weekend? Um, really, I hope you guys have gone out and voted and done your part. I hope, um, you know, hope we're all, when this is all said and done, we can still, we can, I mean, there can be good advancements. Um, let's kind of take a look here in a sports perspective of what's gone on. And why we need to vote. I mean. Just take. I mean. There's been a few championships won. You had the Dodgers winning. And the Lakers winning. Their championship. Not a whole lot of people were involved for that. Weren't able to. Go and witness this sporting event. Because of COVID-19. Because. I mean honestly. I mean let's be honest. I was on this podcast. I don't even know what episode we're in. But all I said was like. We got to sit down for a few weeks. That's all we had to do. Sit down for a few weeks and I think we'll be all right. We couldn't even, we couldn't do that. And now we're sitting here with a second wave, a worse wave. Don't know when NBA is going to start. Don't know what's going to happen with the NFL. Um, because, I mean, thank God no players tested positive this weekend. But there's still a lot of contact going on. There's still, I mean, the holidays are coming. There's going to be more contact. Um, 
I mean, MMA's done their thing. UFC's done their thing. Dana White's done their thing. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're itching to get back in front of crowds. Um, will that happen? I mean, there was crowd this weekend at boxing in Dallas and Texas for the fight between Santa Cruz and Javante Davis. Um, I'm really, you know, also a lot of these guys, basketball players, WNBA, NFL, everyone, um, are having to use their platforms to try to get some sort of reform in place, um, make people aware of, um, what am I saying? Systematic racism, racial injustice. And, you know, it weighs hard. It weighs heavy on a lot of these people because, you know, someone like LeBron James, I don't verify. I don't mean, I don't find, I mean, as a basketball player, I'm like, Ugh. but as a man, as a human being, philanthropist, a father, I mean, dude, I'm behind this man. Um, it just, you know, so you need to go out there and vote. I mean, now all of a sudden, what's what's been going on the last year or so? Now everyone looks at Colin Kaepernick like, dude, you weren't crazy. Like you, you, you. There's something you wanted to do, and I, I'm sorry for not listening. And when you think about these things that have happened that affected the sports world, let alone the world, sports world, every world, but we need to think about these type of things. Um, I hope that if we do get a new president, there won't be Big Macs at these fucking things. There won't be Big Macs for these kids who can get Big Macs any day of the week. Quarter pounders, crunch traps. <laughs> <coughs> I hope that when they, that there, there is a little bit of a prestige winning a championship and going to the Super Bowl like it used to be. Even when Bush was in, you know, even when Bush was in, uh, in office, it wasn't like, I ain't going over there. I mean, there's a little bit of prestige there. There just really isn't much prestige in the, you know, visiting the White House anymore. But ultimately, I just hope that we can get back to the stands. We can get back to watching sports live, sports live, um, in which we need leadership. We need direction. And I hope we get that. Hope we, I mean, hope something changes. Hope something changes. And we got to go out there and do our part. I said this, every, I've been saying it for the last couple of months, go out there and vote, do your part. Let's make some change. So go out there and vote. Do your part. Make some change. And no matter what, I love you guys. I really appreciate you guys listening um, or watching on YouTube.com slash Sports Plus Life, wherever you guys are. And um, that's it. That's all, that's all I have. My P's and Q's. Um, that's it. So I thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Take care of each other. Go out there and vote. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Sports was like podcast episode number 79. I'll see you guys later. Let's.